The first thing I heard is olive oil. Oh, and olive oil is actually one of the tricks to activate the ghost gene, a polyphenol in olive oil. Okay. You will actually make vitamin C. Okay, there you go. So, there you go. Another good reason. So, have olive oil, yeah. vitamin D, have lots of vitamin D, three, D3. D3. And then what's next to okay. live a long life? Next is you got to get some form of long chain omega-3 fat, be- better known as fish oil. Mm. And vegans have no excuse anymore. There is algae-based, DHA, and EPA. But here's the deal. Your brain uh, is about 70% fat. So if you want to call me a fathead, you know, I, I will You'll take it. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I can just see now the internet um, lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> me <Memes. is> a <laughs> fathead. <laughs> so half of the fat in your brain is actually an omega-3 fat called DHA. So half, basically half of your brain mm-hmm. is fish oil. Wow. And as I talk about in the longevity paradox, you look at people what are called the omega-3 index, which basically looks at how much DHA you have in you over the past two months. People with the highest omega-3 index have the largest brains and the largest areas of memory, the hippocampus. People with the lowest levels of DHA have the most shrunken brains and the smallest memory areas hippocampus Mm. so mom was right when she said fish is brain food you know she was absolutely she didn't know why it was but we now know it's dha is really what makes your brain so sushi is good sushi is actually not a good idea oh wow most of the people i see with high mercury levels are sushi eaters or dentists uh so and particularly sashimi grade tuna God, it's you so good, just wanna, You just kind of want to stay away from it. Oh, sugar Sorry. fish is amazing, though. And, and, tono, and you know. it's got the grains, too. Yeah, it's got the fit. grains, you know. So so no sushi. Yeah, so just, once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so fish oil is incredibly important. Yeah. And what I try to get people to do, and again, I measure this every three months in all my patients, and we're talking, you know, thousands and thousands of patients over the last 20 years you want to get about a thousand milligrams of dha per day now how do you do that well you get fish oil i mean you can go to costco I don't right, care. right right and you look on the back and you find serving size and make sure it says one serving size uh-huh. they love to fool you uh, they may say two or three right, right, and then you look down below and you see dha and you look to see how much dha is in a capsule and you add it up and say, oh, okay, there's 250 milligrams of DHA in this capsule, so I need to take four. Wow. Four a day. Yeah. Or a well, thousand I mean, a day. However. thousand a day. Yeah. yeah. thousand a day. Okay. DHA. We got olive oil. We got uh, vitamin D3. We have fish oils. What else do we need to live longer? So you got to have polyphenols in your diet. So poly- <laughs> what the heck is a polyphenol? <laughs> How do you remember polyphenol? Th- think about polyphenol. Okay. Um, phenols are plant compounds. Polyphenols are plant compounds that plants use primarily to protect themselves uh. against stress and sunlight. Uh-huh. Uh, just interesting fact. We know that red wine is beneficial for you because of actually two polyphenols. The most famous is resveratrol. The other one is quercetin or quercetin. The higher the grapes are grown, the higher in altitude the grapes are grown, the more polyphenols they make. Because they need more to protect themselves. Yeah, right? Exactly. It's basically uh, suntan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they've actually protected themselves against sunburn. Interesting. Also, the more the plant is stressed, the more polyphenols it makes to protect itself. Right. Okay. So polyphenols are traditionally in dark colored berries. So for instance, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Interesting fun fact, the leaves of these trees or vines have more polyphenols than the actual fruit does. Hmm. So, for instance, black raspberry leaves have far more polyphenols than black raspberries. Um, And I take black raspberry capsules, by the way, and it's in the book. There you go. Um, So... 
olives, for instance, are loaded with polyphenols. Huh. And olives that are stressed uh, produce even better. are even better. Wow. Olive leaves have more polyphenols than olives. So olive leaf extract is an easy way of getting the huge amount of benefits without drinking a liter of olive oil. So do you, what about like, uh, you know, leafy greens? Do yeah. you want stressed out looking leafy greens or do you want healthy, thriving Excellent looking? Excellent question. It turns out that the reason organic vegetables in general are better for you, besides the fact that they haven't been sprayed with pesticides mm -hmm. and herbicides and probably Roundup, and we can get into that, is the fact that these Creatures, these plants, actually have to work harder, huh. and they have to produce more polyphenols to protect themselves against insect predation. And so that's actually the reason you want to eat organic. So when you're going to the farmer's market and the poor little organic vegetables have got pockholes of, of insects <laughs> it's and, like they're dying. and yeah. they don't look very good, you go, I want that guy. Really? That guy is struggling. He is going to just be so loaded with polyphenols. Really? And correlation with that is <laughs> the more bitter the better because polyphenols in general yeah. are very bitter uh, for instance when uh, we were developing you know my signature product vital reds it's pure polyphenols primarily mm. and they're bitter so we did lots of taste testing to figure out how the heck we're going to mask these mm. really bitter compounds so more bitter more better in fact, as I talk about it in the book, I, I had the pleasure of knowing Jack LaLanne, uh -huh. uh, who, who you would know is really the godfather of, yeah. of fitness and nutrition in the United States. And I knew him in his later years. Um, and Jack used to have a saying is that if it tastes good, spit it out. Interesting. Now, what he really meant by that is... Bitter things, nasty tasting things is actually what is going to give the bugs that are actually going to keep you alive what they want to eat. And don't, you know, more bitter, more better. Mm. So, you know, the more polyphenols, the more bitter greens I can get into you, the, the better. better. Interesting. But you can get that through capsules and other things, too. You don't yeah, to, you can. Yeah. Uh, and in, in fact, that's one of the reasons I'm a nut about taking a bunch of supplements because... Yeah. We, if you look at even you know, really good organic eaters, most human beings only eat maybe 20 different plant species. Mm -hmm. um, I, right. probably, I probably eat like three. Yeah, yeah. yeah most people do. <laughs> like five, maybe. Yeah, so. you know, and, and you know, ketchup is not a vegetable. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a tomato, and we can't, we, <laughs> we can't, we do, we that, can't yeah. do that. So our an our ancestors, and even looking at modern hunter gatherers like the Hunza tribe, they go through. They eat two hundred and fifty different plant species on a rotating mm. basis. And you think about it, all those plants are grown organically. Uh, they're in six feet of loam soil. They got their cool microbiome, so they're just replete with all these nutrients and polyphenols and so you know if people think that they can actually do a great job eating healthy uh, without supplementation mm -hmm. uh, I got oceanfront property in Palm Springs I'm happy to sell them right right hey, exactly. there is no <laughs> <laughs> right exactly okay so I want to get one more thing I've heard that in order to extend your life you need to I can't remember the name. Extend something at the end of your... Telomeres. Telomeres. Yeah. What is or that? Or telomeres. Either telomeres. Way. So how do we... Ex is that true? Do you have to extend okay. this? So that is one theory of longevity. Yeah. And it, it is a... It's a good theory. I like the theory. Uh -huh. It's controversial. Um, vitamin D. Turns out that people with the highest levels of vitamin D have the longest telomeres there you go so why wouldn't you do that right if you like that theory mm -hmm. there you go so that's vitamin d is vitamin d it, it's if that's anybody is if anybody takes away it's vitamin d so you've given four things so far let's give me one final thing that can extend our life and the the quality of our life as well great so the last thing we want to do is we want to turn off as much as we can the sensor called mTOR uh, originally called the mammalian target of rapamycin uh, it's subsequently been discovered in all organisms besides mm. mammals and so now it's called the mechanistic target of rapamycin and so mTOR is an energy sensor and it's in all of our cells and 
basically we come from a circadian rhythm mm -hmm. system of plentiful food at one time of the year and very little food at right. another time of year right fruit sometimes not the exactly yeah. <clears throat> and we use fruit to gain weight for the winter and that's a whole another subject so mTOR senses energy availability and it senses sugar molecules and it also senses amino acids protein now it turns out that it's very sensitive to particular amino acids mm -hmm. rather than all amino acids the ones it's most sensitive to are amino acids contained in animal protein and animals include fish animal protein includes eggs it includes cheeses and besides you know meat so beautiful work that's been done a lot of it done by now my friend Walter Longo from USC from the longevity mm. center is that the mimicking yeah fasting the, the fasting mimicking diet fasting. I've taken that a couple yeah, of times and I yeah, that he got a patent for yeah. prolong yeah prolong yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah got a patent for it so prolong yeah it's so prolong is a vegan low amino acid diet that you do for five days yeah it's tough the first time it is for me it was. now in the book i wrote about it in the plant paradox actually before he made promo but i write about it again and he and i and he's even given me a nice shout out on the back uh, if you the idea is you want to reduce mTOR as much as you can and the longer the more you suppress it the longer you live and here's the reason mm -hmm. you if times are rough and you sense that times are rough your body your immune system actually goes around and looks at all the cells in your body and says who's pulling their weight who is really you know contributing to this effort and who's a slacker who looks a little weird who's not you know, not doing and it actually instructs cells to commit suicide and it's called autophagy and it tells cells sorry you know you're not die. You're, out, you're out of here yeah. you die um <laughs> and so it gets the fittest of the fittest mm -hmm. to survive it makes you stronger and you have to have these periods of time you have to call the herd as we say so unless you do that you have all of these cells that just kind of build up the debris they're called senescent cells mm -hmm. some people call them zombie cells and it's the amount of these zombie cells that is actually going to make you deteriorate long before you should and get so, sick and yeah, else, exactly yeah. so you got to call the hurt so how you do that five days in a row once a month once you, a month you do this once a month five days wow. in a row five days in a row you follow uh, a, ve a vegan diet mm -hmm. of about 900 calories mm -hmm. and i got some great recipes it's easy to do and you do it five days in a row yeah it's as if you did calorie restriction every day and what this does is not only call the herd but it activates stem cells now everybody says oh stem cells you know it's the future you've got oodles of stem cells in you already mm -hmm. where do you think we get the stem cells we you know take a liposuction and suck out your fat and then we spin it around and we get your stem cells and inject you right back in they're already there you just have to call them into action so when someone does that when they pull it out of you yeah. they're, they're essentially just killing off the dead cells and then putting the good ones back in. no you. they're actually you know they're centrifuging out the stem cells stem cells gotcha. are in fat uh -huh. they're everywhere okay. actually so you but you got to activate the great crazy mm -hmm. thing so you activate them by this modified fast or you uh do intermittent fasting mm -hmm. or time restricted fasting uh for instance for the last 12 years during the winter from january through june monday through friday i don't eat breakfast i don't eat lunch and i eat all my calories in a two-hour window from six to eight o'clock at night so wow. 22 out of 24 hours i'm fasting for how long for six months six months you do that yeah oh my gosh now why do you do that because way back when so just drinking olive oil and vitamin d all day no during the night <laughs> during night, that those two hours yeah, yeah just yeah. drinking it yeah. okay wow yeah but that's why you look so young i don't know that's why you look actually incredible. if you look at pictures of me from 1995 which was about 25 years ago now um i look much older yeah. than than i do do now more amazing episodes just like this one.
Watch now. The exciting thing that I've seen in my practice and other people have documented is about every three months, we throw out a cell and build a new one. So that if you're using quality materials, if you're stimulating autophagy, you can actually get a whole new you every three months.